Today we're going to talk about cutting intaglio glass tile, focusing mainly on the hexagons. What gives intaglio its incredible depth are the indentations on the back side of the glass. Glass is melted over forms to create these indentations and then the color is applied. Unfortunately, these indentations also create surface tension, which makes the hexagons difficult to cut. Long straight cuts perpendicular to the two parallel sides of the hexagon and long cuts from point to point cannot be cut on a tile saw. Even cutting partway through the bottom and then partway through the top, the glass breaks away from the cut line. These cuts can, however, be made with a good glass cutter. The most common injury from cutting glass is cutting yourself on sharp edges. Cuts can be avoided with a good pair of gloves, but many people, including myself, find that gloves make it difficult to feel the cutter and choose to work without them. Most of us got quite a few cuts in the beginning, but got better as we learned the tricks of the trade. Cuts should be cleaned and bandaged when they do happen. A much more dangerous aspect of cutting glass is injuring your eyes. Whether you're using a glass cutter or a wet saw, glass chips are thrown into the air and can cause serious injury, including blindness. Always wear eye protection when you're cutting glass. For cutting glass tiles, you want a clean flat area. A table or workbench is an ideal height to work on. The surface must be flat and have a soft material that won't scratch the glass and could be easily cleaned of glass chips. I'm just using some packing material I found in the warehouse. This also protects the cutter. Dropping down on a hard surface can damage the wheel and the cutter will no longer work properly. It's worthwhile to have a good glass cutter. The model I'm using has a better head than what you'll find on cheaper cutters and it has a reservoir for cutting oil. It's also worthwhile to have some running pliers to help finish some of the more difficult cuts. I got all of these and some cutting oil on Amazon. They're not readily available from hardware or big box stores. You can use 3-in-1 oil or mineral spirits, but cutting oil works the best. It's also easy to clean off and doesn't have a strong solvent smell. Finally, you'll want a small square and a straight edge with a bottom that won't scratch the tile or slide around too easily. I'm using a 12-inch piece of tile bullnose with duct tape on the face. I figured that was something most of the people watching this could find without any trouble. It's best to lay out your installation so the cuts going perpendicular to the two parallel sides are inside of the straight lines of those sides which are usually the top and bottom of the tiles in a wall installation. You can adjust the widths of the tiles on both sides to stay in this area. The cuts will be easier and the finished installation will look better without any small points. Measure where you want the cut to be made and mark it with a grease pencil or china marker. You can make a mark all the way down the cut or just mark the top and bottom of the cut. With a lubricated glass cutter, it's a good idea to run the wheel across a piece of paper to make sure the cutting oil is getting to the wheel before starting your cut. Put your tile on the cutting mat and place a straight edge alongside the marks with enough space that the cutting wheel is right on top of the marks. Although the cutter can work in either direction, most people are more comfortable pulling the cutter towards themselves, and this is how I learned to cut glass. Place the cutter at the top edge of the tile, pull the cutter towards yourself with a firm but not hard downward pressure with one smooth motion. The cutting wheel should make a steady singing sound all the way across the tile, which indicates you're using the right amount of pressure. Not enough pressure won't score the glass properly, but too much pressure will damage both the glass and the cutter. Getting this right takes a little practice, but that even sound is a good indication of a proper stroke. You want to snap the tile along the cut immediately after scoring it. The glass will actually begin to heal if you wait and won't break properly. Put the tile over a small diameter round object like a coat hanger, small dowel, or in this case a long steel bracket with a score line directly over the object and push down on both sides. Intaglio tiles are rather thick, so it often takes quite a bit of pressure to get the tile to snap. In cases where the cut is too small to get adequate pressure on the tile, you can use the running pliers to snap the tile. Running pliers are slightly rounded to put pressure along the score. You want the high spot of the pliers on the bottom of the tile and the two ends that are rounded slightly down on the top of the tile, pushing the two sides down to snap it. There's a line on the top of the pliers to help you line up the cut. In glass shops, they also have flat pliers to help snap problem cuts, but the running pliers can be used this way to get cuts that don't break completely across on the first try. Hold the larger portion of the tile on the table with one hand and use the pliers to snap the tile along your cut. After each cut, clean off your table and mat to prevent glass chips that can cut you or scratch the glass. Use a broom rather than your hands. These pieces will be extremely sharp. 
If you still don't have a clean cut, or if the bottom edge sticks out too far to maintain your desired grout joint width, you can trim those portions on a wet saw. Don't try to cut all the way through the tile. Cut about one third down to clean up the top and about the same to clean up the bottom. Make sure you have a good flow of water on the blade. A dry blade will create a badly chipped surface. Very small cuts are nearly impossible to break off with a tile cutter. Fortunately, they can be done on a saw without the problems we have on larger cuts. I'm using a piece of cardboard from the carton here to protect both sides of the tile. With all glass tiles, cutting all the way through the tile creates chipping that can't be fixed. On tiles like Intaglio, where the color is applied on the bottom of the tile, these cuts will look especially bad in the finished installation. The solution is to cut about one third of the way down through the color on the back side, then turn the tile over and cut about one third of the way down from the top. This will leave a nice edge on both sides, although for the best edge, you'll also want to use a fine stone or disc sander to smooth out the top side on all cuts, including those you make with a glass cutter. I hope this gives you a good understanding of how to successfully cut intaglio glass. These techniques will also work with almost any other kind of glass tiles you might run into. Thanks for watching.